Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to your daily lighting critique. Uh, today, we have cool stuff to look at as we do every day. Um, but first, uh, we have Forrest, who did the very clever thing that I like to do, which is just labeling something as final and sending it off. Uh, and it's like, <laughs> it just like makes it fine. I tried that with my thesis when I was in grad school. I, I was like, if I just like pretend like it's the final version, I'll be able to get my thesis advisors to sign off it. And I like, I sent it to him in his email that was like, here's my final guys. Thank you so much for all your support over the last year. I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to whatever. And, and so, but yeah, but yes, Forrest, this is looking really good. Um, I think that there, there are a couple tweaks, um, but I think it all can be done in the comp. Um, and so I think you're, you're, you're done with the big pretty render because this looks great. Um, the couple things that I would tweak, and this is, this is more from looking at this, uh, more and more. I'm wondering if we can't just this, this area in here, I, I, I want to darken it, um, almost to the point of like where this is just because like, for some reason it just kind of stand, like, I just want to do this with my hand and just block it. Like it, it's something about it being thin and, and a little bit contrasty over that I wanted, that I wanted to tone down. I, it, it, I just kind of wanted to just fade back more into the background. Um, and, cool. I and, can since, do that. and since it's a still, uh, that'd be pretty easy to do, I would imagine. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, the other, and it's, it looks like, because I know that you were struggling with the eye dings on this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we can, uh, you can keep working on it, but like I said, hopefully, and I, I, I don't want to like promise this because it, there's a chance it won't work or whatever, but we are trying to develop a, um, nuke solution to easily putting eye dings using some like, um, uh, some reflection maps and stuff that should make it easier for you to do that. So, uh, we may not have it for like a few weeks or a month or so. Um, but just a, the heads up that that's in development and that would make your job pretty easy on that. So you may not, you may not need to tackle that. And then the last thing I was going to say was, um, just his fingernail. If, if you, if I don't, I don't know if these can crypto mat out, but his fingernails yeah, look can. a little pink red. Um, and I was h hoping to desaturate those and tone those down a little bit, make them a little, uh, like a little whiter, I guess. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. But that's pretty much it. Does anybody else, how are you guys feeling about this? It's really nice. Yeah. And, oh, it looks know, awesome. The other <laughs> one is the tongue, oh, this is so minor. The tongue of the bird is very saturated. So yeah, I, that's cryptoed out too, so I can Ugh, I, I love crypto mats, right? I know, that they've ugh, been so helpful. They're the best. They're my favorite thing. When I saw him, I was like, oh my God, I'm never going to render anything again. <laughs> One time, and then I crypto mat it to death, and that's the end of it. Uh, but this looks great. Yeah. So, yeah um, I'm excited to make Final V2. Final V2, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, take a look at your breakdown that you put together. This is another trick at making somebody think it's final, too. Be like, well, you, you only break down something. No, this looks good. Um, Yeah, I, I think the bake down's nice. It's a good pace to it. And the, the diagonal swipes are a nice touch, too. Um, okay, let's hop into some stills. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. All right, so we have, let's start, we'll start at the front. Uh, Andre, let's take a look here. All right, so we've got the old version now on top with the new version. Uh, ba, 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 ba. values on the inside look better. Um, the shaping on the characters is getting better and better. I just think it's, it's still a little bright on the edges. And then, okay. yeah, just, just like his, the, the, the main key light on his rim, I would just bring that down. Um, I like the existence of the reflections. I think they're, they're, there's, uh, they're too sharp a little bit. Like I think okay. they'd be a little bit blurrier. Um, also, and this is like the lighting on him in the reflection doesn't necessarily match the lighting on him in the scene. Like he looks a little bit more like they're just like looking at his shirt value. And I know it wouldn't be like a perfect one-to-one -one 
but like it's very very bright up here and this looks very dim um and his face almost looks like here it looks nice and skin like here it looks pretty plastic and pretty um like he's got those very tight specular highlights on his nose and stuff um mm -hmm. i i think maybe just blurring and also like the the color feels a little different but um but i think i think if you just blur out the reflection a little bit and make it more um rough it'll it'll that might <laughs> Them, those all might be moot points, you know what I mean? Because you may not see it as as um, with enough detail to really distinguish the differences. Um, I'm also wondering, I'm looking at, and you can play around with this too. Uh, I'm looking at these lights up here and I'm wondering if we shouldn't add a little translucency to them. Um, because if you think about like a, a lamp it wouldn't be like a ceramic bowl that would block the light. It would be like uh, somewhat translucent. If you want, you can play around with that. If not, it's, it's a really minor thing. But I think the bigger thing for you on this right now is to tone this down slightly um, and then diffuse, blur, rough up the reflection a little bit and then see if, if we need to adjust the lighting after that gets roughed up a little bit. Uh, anybody okay. else have any suggestions or thoughts? No, that's good. Yeah getting better better each and every time cool thanks yeah you're welcome all right ashley so okay so this improvement on the wicker is exactly what i was looking for that looks great it looks like that type of interior warmth um it has like it now feels like it's getting lit from behind from the window I think Forrest or somebody pointed out the, um, like the kind of, like in this area in here, um, like that stuff popping through and that makes a huge difference. Um, it looks, it looks so good. It looks really, really good. Can you talk a little bit about how you got that interior fill? Did you just put a light in there? Did you put a bounce light in there? Are you here? I thought she was here. I am totally wrong. Well, either way, Ashley, wherever you are, it's looking really beautiful and it's a really good job. Um, yeah, let's see the leaves. The leaves look a lot better. Yeah, that color really helps. Just look at this. What do you guys think? Is anybody see anything on this that you would change? Yeah. It's I think it's looking good. Yeah. Um is the the spec on the wood a bit overexposed or is it just my monitor? A little bit. Yeah. That's fair. Let's let's tone down the spec on the wood a little bit. I love that it's there because I don't think it was there in the last iteration. It was, it just wasn't as much. But um I think that's looking really good. The other thing I'm noticing too is just double check the depth of field. Cause I'm seeing like I see that I see that like Right here, and it might be tough for you guys to see on your screens, but like right here is in focus, but right here isn't. And then like this part of the plan is out of focus, but this part is in focus and that's clearly in focus. It looks like there's some, uh, it looks like there's just maybe some problems with the, with the Z pass or whatever you're using to generate the depth of field. So I would just check that. Um, and, and it happens sometimes with like really, really small shapes like this, because Z depth is depending on the renderer that generates it, it can get m dirty. Like it, it works really well around, like let's say you broke these out into render passes and you broke this window out separately, like this edge would be very clean, but like something like this in here where it's, it's, it's an, called an interior edge, where there's not like a clean alpha on the outside, it can get a little dicey in there. So uh, you may just wanna check in on that. All right, we have a Yako here, welcome. And uh, yes, okay. So uh, Abhishek, I think, made some really good comments about the reference versus the original. So I'll just echo um, uh, his points, which are uh, number one, the, the warm to cool difference. By the way, this reference is beautiful. This is really cool. This is, this is like, um, you know, so often we pull reference from like another animated film. You pull it from photography, whatever. Painting is my favorite reference point because it's the most similar to what we do in that they have total control over their lighting. It's all about the aesthetics of it. Um, 
Also, like the fact that this is kind of abstract really helps us out because it kind of helps identify things like, like, oh, the street is very reflective. Like what makes us feel that it's reflective? Because it's not a photograph of reflection. It's that um, it's mirroring this a little bit. It's, it's kind of like the color, but a little bit, uh, a little bit darker. Um, we've got this atmospheric fall off and we've got darker blacks here in the foreground and they lift up as we go back. Um, there's overall tonality, that, like hue shift from cool tones up here to warm tones down here. Like just really cool compositional stuff. So um, how that translates to here is, yeah. So first off, it would be a matter of, of pushing these warm and cool value differences. The second thing I would do is think about this um, overall value shift across the entire image. Uh, in this one, it becomes a little bit broken up because you have a light here, you have a light here, and you have these lights back here. I think if, turn these lights off, turn this light off, and just make it about um, these lights in here, or maybe even just here. Eh, I think you do do these too. And turn all those off, and then make it all about coolness on this side of the frame, and then coming down this way into the warmth would be really cool. Um, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so I think I think that would be really good. Um, also, like checking these bright points of the this. In so the thing that really works about this this storefront uh, scene is that there's there's brightness, but you can see in the abstraction that there's stuff breaking up um, the bright values. And I think we can do that in here by making this brighter and then putting just something. It doesn't have to be that small, but like just something like a primitive object. Something to make it look like there's a couch, a bookcase, a table, something in front of that window casting a little bit of shadow. Because you can see here on these windows, um, when it's just light coming out, it doesn't, like there's some, you feel like there's something missing. And it's, it's those small shapes of things in, on the interior of the room casting shadow. Um, yeah. And then you've got a little bit of the atmospheric build up here. I think that's working really well. Um, yeah, and then and then the other comment about the getting the ground uh, yeah. to pick up a little bit more of the reflections. But yeah, I mean you've, you've kind of got it, but just just amplifying that and watch out on this ground. The edges, I don't know if it's displacement or bump, but the edges are a little crisp. See, it, you might you might need to soften those edges a little bit. And then same thing with these lights. Um, mm -hmm. With this reference, you can kind of see a bulb here in the in the middle of these, so it would be more about getting like a brighter bulb here in the middle, and then like a little bit of fall off from there. But gr like great start. Like I said, I think I think um, finding really strong reference like this really gives you a good uh, a good um, like starting point and a good place to be. Do Do you have any questions about any of that? Okay. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, it's really good stuff. Thanks. All right. Is Jordan here? We'll come back. Jordan, we'll come back to you, buddy. Um, Matt is here. So uh, we've got your previous version. Uh, with And now we've got... So we started here. So this is step one, starting point. Step two, finding new reference. And then we go to step uh, three here. So I want to focus on this shot, this shot up here, um, with the reference. So... Looking at her, I think that, in fact, let me just pull this in. Um, so I want, I want to just look at the character lighting compared to these two. You're, you're, you're starting to get there, right? Um, you're starting to get like the, there's a rim light on her. There's a rim light on, on, on our character. Um, the main area that I would work on is this fill value. So if you look at the fill uh, like level on her face here, it's it, it is a little bit flat. Like it's not um, the brightest. There's a little bit of fall off coming across this way, but the overall light value that's bouncing back up on her face is going to be a little bit brighter than this. Um, and so you want you want to make sure to get that like that extra that extra bounce in there. Um, and then also the value of it feels. It's, it's really nice because you can still see a lot of the red warmth in her skin, but you're also feeling that cool light in there. So it's, they're actually doing a really good job of balancing those two things. So I think it would be a matter of 
toning down some of the yellows in her skin, allowing some of the blues to get in there from the light, and then really kind of playing up um, a little bit more like the reds and blues on her a little bit um, and taking down some of the, the, the yellows in her skin tone if you can. And then... Yeah, the, the, the light quality of this one is a little bit softer um, on the key, especially on the rim. Like I'm looking at this on the arm. Um, it's a little a little bright. I would soften that uh, and, and take down the intensity a little bit. Um, and then in terms of the rest of it, yeah, so, so what, by, by putting that in there, um, it, would, it would also kind of lift like I, when I'm talking about lifting the fills, it's not only on her, it's also on, on kind of the rest of it. Like some of this is getting a little bit heavy too. Uh, and then the other thing that I want to make sure matches up is the ground color between the two. Because uh, this one looks a little more yellow and brighter than this one. Um, and I'm wondering if there isn't a way to add a little bit of a gobo light or something back here just to kind of put some more shadow. Um, because it's a little consistent across, like maybe put this side in shadow so we can really feel her going off that way. And then shaping on the tree trees here looks pretty good. Again, the fill is going to come up. Um, and then I would, I'm looking at the saturation, especially on this tree, maybe on the house too, coming down a little bit, but we'll, we can play along with that. Because again, if, if, if this is the, the reference we're looking at, one of the qualities of it is a more of a desaturated color palette, which is really nice. And I don't know how, you, how true you want to stay to that, but I think that's, um, that would be one way to go with that, too. Yeah, that, that all makes sense to me, yeah. Okay, cool. Do you have any other questions or anything? Um, as for the, that first shot, like since she's being backlit, mm -hmm. um, how would I go about doing like the eye dings for it? Or it, would, it would pretty much be the same way. The one, the one thing that you handle, the one way that you handle, um, the one way that I handle eyedings if a character is being backlit in the fill area is you just make them a little bit softer and a little less intense than you normally would. Um, you know, like she's got them here on her tiny little pupils, but, um, uh, but I, I would make it uh, maybe double the size that it currently is now and then double, and then like add, add a, map about, a little bit of blur on it. Because what you want is you want it to be um, the reflection of, of the, the, like you want it to be a reflection of the light hitting a surface in front of her, right? So you want it, you want to, we call it, we would call it a reflection ding. And I should say this, because there was some talk about terminology in CG. The term eye ding isn't, I don't think it's universally adopted. I think that's the thing that we did at Blue Sky that I still say. I don't think every company calls it that. So if you guys don't hear people calling them dings as or just reflections or eye spec or something, um, that's that, that that just giving a heads up on that. But I would make it a little bigger, a little softer, um, but definitely definitely still present. People call it catch lights also. Yes, that's, there's another term for it. Too. It's all the same thing, but uh, yeah. All right. All right, cool. So uh, Ruby, you are here. And then we've got Tristan. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, it's come together. Um, got a little more light shining around the room. It's a little pink bit here. I don't know what that is. We might want to tone that oh, down. Yeah, I think. Oh, good. Yeah, I think that's from the slippers. Oh, the slippers. Ah. Um, yeah, I would, I would, like a, yeah. I mean, even if it's like a bunny nose, sorry. Is that the nose of the bunny? Yeah. Like does she have bunny slippers? She does. Ah. I was going to just clone stamp that out. There we go. Um, okay. Let's think about this. Spotlight shining around. What do you guys think of, uh, cause I'm wondering if, I'm trying to get this light to play. Now, I was gonna say, I wonder if it would, if it would work to get a, make this light be a little bit of a rim on this character. Cause I'm trying to like tie them together a little bit, but I don't know if that would work. I don't think that's believable enough. 
Um, Got the light shining on her. Okay, I'm pulling down. I'm trying to think of how we can improve this. What do you guys, I'm, I'm looking for suggestions here. What do you guys think? Well, I think that, you know, the rim light that you said on the robot, uh, maybe, maybe that could be cheated a little, a little bit, mm -hmm. like, uh, um, because like when, what I did on the coffee shop thing is also same thing is like, I put a different light on, uh, to do a rim on the girl mm -hmm. than on the guy. And it's like, the difference is probably almost like 90%, uh, I'm sorry, 90 degrees between the two of them. But it looks believable because it's coming from the outside. I think it, it could work also the same way yeah. there to have like a little bit of a rim light, uh, you know, to 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 tie them together. I think it would look good. Okay. Yeah, I'll buy that. So I think I think we might need to to, to alter the shaping a little bit on the robot. Like maybe um, instead of creating shaping by him going light to dark this way. Again, it may not make sense totally, but I think it would be good to get a little bit of like a, a rim on this side, allow this to go a little darker, because it is nice when you have two characters together to kind of, when we're trying to tie them t together, like to just like kind of create the focus drawing to the center a little bit. And the other thing that I was looking at was if this robot is reading this book, um, it's almost like he has the light on so he can read the book, but it doesn't actually illuminate it. I'm wondering if we couldn't play it up, like maybe this is a little spotlight or something shining on the book itself so we can highlight that a little bit more. Um, I don't know how robots work. I don't know if they need light to read, uh, but I assume that they might. Um, and so I think, I think it might be a matter of shift, because right now, like if you just kind of look at the robot, it kind of shifts our eye this way because that's where the light source is. I'm wondering if we do these couple of tricks where darken this side, more rim here, try and generate more light onto the book somehow. Um, I think I think that could really tie everything together into this one spot in the room. What do you think? What do you think about that, Ruby? Yeah. Oh, uh, you're muted. Sorry, Maybe. is that? Okay. Um, so yeah, um, I do have a light in the, um, uh, pointing the, the notebook right now. Mm -hmm. Um, the, I think in the first iteration that I had, uh, that's why I had the, uh, whole, uh, face kind of lit up because yeah. that was like my point of, uh, putting light on that book. Um, but yeah, so from now on, you want me to have it like under the so it would be the face? Like, is that what you say yeah so basically for the uh for the light on the book because like if, we, if it came out of his eyes it would shoot too high um there's a yeah. little thing right here and i can't remember i have to look at the design of the robot but basically i want to almost mimic like there's light coming out of the robot that's specifically shining to uh, to illuminate the book um, right. maybe try and because because some of the robots hidden from this angle, so we can play up like he has like a mm -hmm. nose light or something that's shining on there, um, okay. or or it could come out of. Does he have a he has a thing on his chest? Does he have like an Iron Man thing on his chest? I can't remember. I have to look at the design again. Uh, maybe not, yeah. but uh, but you could even make it like a light coming out of his chest. But something just to kind of because I think I think so. This is what I'm thinking. If we put light that shines from the robot down here, that would actually bounce some light up from the book that would justify more of the rim on that side too. Okay. So, I, I would say- Can I, I make say, a suggestion? Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, sorry. Um, I don't know how difficult it would be, but I feel like um, have, tilting the robot's head down so he's actually looking at the book will be could make a really nice composition of like her head in the clouds and the robot down, and it would motivate turning the eyes on and I love the lighting um, and I feel like the the dome light should go like the actual image should be darker to like to make the 
the fact that the blue isn't like motivating um like lighting on them a bit more obvious i love the note about the, about tilting the head down i think that'll really work when you're talking about darkening the blues you're talking about like darkening the fill values or darkening the actual hdri oh i see outside the window so it darkens out a little bit yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say, yeah, that, that can come down a little bit out there. Um, you could also, and this really goes for, like, anybody out there. I know there was another shot the other day where you said it was, like, if it was in your room, you would be, like, scared of it. I haven't seen the progress on that one. But, like, I Googled, um, I Googled Netflix Lost in Space Robot, and they do a really cool thing with that character because he is terrifying looking. Um, they do the traditional... A red emission out of his face is evil. A blue emission out of his face is uh, is happy, um, and it's not like a, it's not like a it's not like a light beam. It's more of like an emissive, like cloudy, like kind of thing. It's really really cool. I like the way they handle that character is is really neat in that in that show. So I've, I've never seen this character. I've I've not watched this show yet. He looks lizard like. It's really good. He looks terrifying. <laughs> He's terrifying, and that's kind of the thing, but, like, uh, I won't, like, spoil it if you're interested, but, like, they do a really cool job of using, of, of, of humanizing or, like, downplaying this terrifying-looking robot and, and making him friendly and stuff. It, they do a really nice job of it. Very cool. I had no idea. Um, very cool stuff. All right, that, thank you. That reminds me of a, a, I don't remember where did I see that, but, um, on the um, Finding Nemo, when they are when they uh, um, um, find the tr the sharks mm -hmm. that are trying to be I don't know not eat fish, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and and they do like this subtle thing because it reminded me because of the color. Yeah, the the eyes, and I thought that was brilliant. It's like the moment that he smells blood, his eyes turn from human to shark eyes, and it's like. Amazing. Because because all of a sudden you're because you're just like oh it's it's friend like, um, uh, uh, I'm watching. So my son has learned the word scary and he the concept of being scared, and so we were watching Kung Fu Panda last night, and he's he's convinced that snakes are scary mostly because I think snakes are scary probably, um, but there's this the snake character in that and he just kept saying snake scary snake happy snakes happy snakes because the snake is very like joyful in that movie and so he's like yeah so it's just funny to and everything else is like when the bad character comes it's scary oh scary like yeah totally scary buddy and then he started punching me at the end of the movie and i was like oh i see what i've done wrong <laughs> he's like kung fu yeah. and he started like hitting my belly and i was like oh no my parents won't let me show my nephews power rangers i just don't understand like don't they want the two boys <laughs> to put it up I think I was like, oh, yes, this is an influence on him. Um, yeah, turns out that's a thing. We're going to stick to Little Mermaid from now on. Okay. Um, next up. Okay, Tristan. So I haven't, Thank you. Yeah. So I haven't seen this in a few days. Um, and I'm, and yeah. like my first reaction to seeing it was because I know, and it's funny because I know um, the reference on this was this dark on his face. But seeing it, it was, it was almost like, I just want to try one iteration with more fill on the front of his face a little bit. Um, just because this light behind him feels so broad that it almost feels like there would be, I don't know, there would be enough bounce in there to, to fill in some of these dark values in here. So, but that being said, I think everything else is looking good. This is getting a little bright in here mm -hmm. and then right there. But everything else is feeling pretty good. But for my own sanity, would you would you mind just doing like one iteration where you just put like a spot like a little spotlight on his face just to kind of brighten it up a little bit? Um, yeah, sure. Right. So I think that would I think and and you can total like put it in a non destructive way where if you already have this rendered as a high res thing, maybe just render it out as a pass and and mm -hmm. sprinkle it in the comp or something. But um, but other than that, I think it looks um, I think it's looking really good. Does anybody cool. else have any notes on this one? Yeah, I think it's good. All right. Yeah, cool. All right. We've got one. Oh, we've got two more to do. Let me make sure. Yes, we've got uh, Rack of Andras and Jordans. Uh, we'll do Jordans first. So, um, oh, 
I also turned in. Oh, one. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Okay. Let's find you, Ashley. Let's do Ashley first. Uh, why am I missing it? Is it? Am I not seeing it? It's a link. Oh, in there. the links. Oh, wait. Oh, there's two. Yeah. There's actually. Oh, yeah. there's no image, so it's probably. Got it. Okay. Yes, that's why. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Cool. Okay. And actually, I lost. Uh, there's another. The Antonio's is in here too. Um, let's get those loaded up really quick. I can't type your name. Um, yeah, those links are small. I miss them sometimes. Cause I, I, I cause I let these build up. Um, and then, uh, and then I go through like right before we start recording and, and gather them up. Okay. Give me just one second. Your computer. Actually. All right, actually, we'll go through. These are going to take a second to encode. Let's go through uh, Jordan's and um, and uh, Ragavan, uh, Ragavandra's as well. So I like this little bit of glow on the cup. The biggest thing is um, the haze that we've introduced has lifted the black values a little bit too much. And I think it's okay back here, but like in the foreground, it just feels a little bit too lifted. Uh, so I would take that down. Specularity on her skin feels good. This neck tidbit is a bit much. Uh, the thumb is getting a little extra subsurface scattering. I would tone that down. Um, and then similar to what we were talking about in rubies, I'm wondering if we could hit a little bit of warm rim light on the character and then watch out for that sharp shadow right there. Because like I think I think the reflective nature of the um, the robot could actually pick up a little bit of of that of the, the amount of light that's hitting her. Um, I think that would be good. And then for this one, uh, I always love a good uh, Stranger Things reference. Um, so the biggest thing for me is, is like evaluating this shot first and the things that we have, we have light coming in this window that's causing like really pretty rim light on all the characters. Um, I, 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 a, a, it's pretty pretty high contrast, but there's definitely still some fill values, like bounce light coming in here to fill in the characters' faces. It only kind of gets dark in the deep corners of the room and off to the sides. And then we also have this um, pink light that's uh, illuminating the terrarium there. And then uh, I think we noticed this too, was the, uh, the translucency of the, the windows as well. So translating that over into yours here, we've got this pink light coming. Uh, it's cool, we've got the light coming in this way that's starting to get the rims. The biggest thing is that fill value. So right now we've got the darks in here, um, but on the characters, like this value in here is much darker than what we're seeing in here. It's also much um, harsher. Like these, the lines and the shadow lines on their faces are very, very rigid which in here it's like it's you can see the shadows are like much softer um so i would say the biggest thing for you to match is the shadow shape um and then and then really work on getting some more uh soft fill light in there maybe like because again we've got the light hitting here and then bouncing up from this way i would i would say try having this sunlight hit the ground a little bit here and then maybe putting an area light in there to bounce some light back up into the characters a little bit. Um, for now, I would consider turning off this pink light. Um, and then, and it's just to kind of help build the structure of the scene uh, first, because like that's just like that 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 can kind of come in later because that's a little bit of easier one. But really, just getting that bounce that that key to fill light. Uh, balance going on in the room would be is really crucial to this okay let's hop back over and i bet you it's done encoding now cool ashley let's take a look keyboard looks cool that looks um yeah that's looking a lot better let's check the pop between the
All right, cool. I still think I still think we can go darker from the from the monitor light coming out of the gate. So like up until this point, like up until like frame one oh five. I would take I would take the intensity down to the light coming out of the monitor down by about half. Um, okay. Because I think it's it's just I really like again it's like this whole shot is um, based on the change, so we really want to emphasize that. But everything else is looking really okay. great. Um, depending on on how much time you want to invest in this scene, to, actually, you no, know I take this back. I was gonna say it feels like. He would have like he would have more crap on his desk, but you know what I mean. Like he would just like have it like covered and stuff. Um, but uh, he might not. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know much about this man. Um, but it looks it, it's looking really good otherwise too. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. I was I would say just those two things. Anybody else seeing anything? Like, keep it keep it rolling. Um, I I think that uh, once again same thing that you said depending on how much you want to how much time you want to put it in um, when he in the beginning when he is saying you know he says like where's everybody or like they, they're all uh, uh, they don't show up or something like that you know when you when you playing a game you would probably be like penning out the you know penning the or, like turning around to try to find the people. So maybe just have a gobo on on it that it moves a little bit or make some sort of a vari variation on the light um, so that it kind of like gives you this idea that he's actually moving through the game. But then again, depending on how much time you want to put into that. It's it's that's a, that's a cool idea because it like at the beginning, you'd want it to be like subtle. Like he's just kind of like looking, looking, looking. Like, so it could even just be like a small thing sliding across. Um, and then it's like, boom, yeah. and then it jumps. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool though. Yeah, this is, this is great. Um, just from looking at everyone's headphones in the uh, call, I feel like the, the plastic spec could be tightened a bit, a little less rough. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's funny. That's that's like looking at live reference in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. And then when he leans his head back, the bottom of his hair um, gets very bright. Like the underside of his hair? Yeah, the underside when he leans back, which might not be an issue, but it feels like there's like a source like right behind the chair. Oh, yeah. It's going back into that backlight yeah. that's looking from behind. You, you may, yeah, you may want to pull that back a little bit because that's a good point. Because like in, in in motion, it kind of yeah, it doesn't it doesn't feel it feels like it feels kind of poppy. It feels kind of flashy when he does it. So you may just want to like tighten the cone on that or angle it slightly or something. All right, cool. Let's take a look at Antonio's to finish up. Whoa. See this as audio. This is pretty. That's all. That's all I'm thinking. It's like this looks really pretty. Yep. I think this is done. Does anybody have anything for this? Uh, Antonio, uh, let me know. I would love to put this in the Hall of Fame. I think this is, um, this is, uh, this feels like it should go in a film. That's all that, like, that's, I, I want to see, I want to see what else happens. This feels like, yeah, this feels like the start of a short or something. I think it looks really, really, really great. Um, ooh, <laughs> I looked at it too long. Um, I was wondering, maybe the tops of these buildings feel a little bit bright, but you know what? I don't. Th I think it's totally minor. I don't think it's an issue. That might just be me being looking for. You know, sometimes it's like I, I look. You, you, you look at these things. It's, it's the problem of what we're doing, which is like you kind of analyzing it for like, okay, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And you kind of lose sight of the fa the overall thing, which is like, you're just you're. This is just good, and it kind of helps emphasize that it's brighter outside. Forget the note. I think this looks great. 
Forget I said that. All right. Sorry to make you wait until the end and probably wonder if we forgot about you. But uh, this looks great. Great job. It's a great way to go into the weekend. Um, thank you, guys. Is there anything before we call it a day, call it a week? All right. Thank you guys so much. This is a great week. Uh, we'll do more next week. We got some cool stuff coming up, cool stuff to announce to you all, hopefully very soon, uh, finalizing some new things. So um, looking forward to that. All right. I'll talk to you all very, very soon. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Happy Bye. 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 Bye.